Hi, and welcome to Quilt Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can display links to your social media using the social links widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. With this widget, you can easily add a link to your social media anywhere on your site and style it in a snap. This page we're on right now has some examples of how this widget can be used and styled. As you can see, there are different things you can do with it. You can link icons or buttons with text, or style either of those things in different ways. Generally, this widget gives you a lot of room to showcase your creativity. So, let's see how this widget works and what options it offers. Head over to the back end, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for social links. Here it is. Drag it over to the right. Now, this is what it looks like by default. The links are styled with simple text. And if you look on the left, we have the layout set to textual. The alternative to that is icon. I'll be opting for that one. But before I do, let me quickly go over the relevant options for the textual layout. One of those options would be when we open the item settings, you'd have this text field where you can change the anchor text for your social link. And of course, the link field will be there for both text and icons. Besides that, in the Style tab, you'll have this section called Text Link Style. In here, you'll find different things you can use to adjust the look of your textual social links, such as typography options, border options, color settings, changes on hover, and so on. Okay, that's for the textual layout, but I plan on using the icon layout, so let's get back to the content tab and examine the options we get with that setting. So, first I need to switch this to icon. Alright, we can see the social links on the page have turned into these icons, and that they are aligned vertically. You can change that using the direction option. Simply pick horizontal instead of vertical. And with the horizontal direction, we get this option, Rotate. You can use it to twist the icons as if they are on a dial to the left, which looks like this, or to the right, which looks like this. The change with the icons is more subtle, but you can try this out with the textual layout. It can be pretty cool. However, for my design, I'll be sticking with the No Rotate setting. Okay. After that, we have the items. The number of items equals the number of social links you want to have on your page, and each item has its own settings. Given that I picked the icon layout, I now have this field where I can replace the default icon. We can pick something from the icon library, which is quite extensive. So we have this one now, but you can pick anything else to replace it. Alternatively, we can upload an SVG, which is what I'll do. I already have the one I plan on using in my media library, so I'll simply select it and insert media. Then we can add the link that would be attached to our icon. I'm placing a hashtag here as a placeholder since this is just for the tutorial, but you should make sure to set a proper URL here for the social network whose icon you've set. Alright, I'm going to quickly customize the other items. Let's skip ahead while I do that. And here we are. I even added one more item. If you want to do that too, simply click on this Add Item button. Now, after that, we have the Label field. This is where you can add a bit of text before your icons. I'll make mine say Contact Me. There we go. And now we can see the text I typed in here to the left of the icons. And if you're worried about the spacing, we'll be adjusting that a bit later when we reach the appropriate options. And that was pretty much the final option in the content tab. We have two sections left here, and both of them are included with every key add-ons widget. The first is the developer tools. When we open it, it has one option, which, if enabled, will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. I'll put this back now. OK. And under that, we have the help section where you can find some helpful resources and a link to our help center in case you need it. So that was everything we had in the first tab. Now moving on to the second one, Style. The first option here lets us add padding around our whole element. You can see how the space around here has shifted since I increased the padding values. I'm happy with the default, so I'll clear this. Then we have the background color option. 
you can set any shade you like and it will appear behind the whole element. Let me clear this. OK. And under that we have the link spacing option. With it we can create bigger gaps between individual social links. I'm going to set this to 26 pixels. OK. Now the section under that is for the text link style. If you recall, we looked at it earlier as part of the options you'd use with the textual layout type. It's empty now because I'm using icons instead of text for displaying my social links. So, moving on, we have the icon style settings. The first option here is icon boxed, meaning whether the icons will be in little boxes. If you enable it, there we go. This is what it looks like. Now, the icons have individual backgrounds in a way. The default box background color is light gray, but you can change that. We have this option to help us, and you can easily set any color you like. Other than the color, you can also change the box size. It's very straightforward. And if you're using boxed icons, you can add borders to them. Simply set the icon border color, like so, and then increase the border width if you like. Additionally, we have the icon border radius option. It will work whether you use a border or not. You just need to have boxed icons. And then when you increase the values here, you can round out the corners of your boxes. Increase the values enough and you'll turn the square backgrounds into circles. My plan design doesn't include any of this, so give me a moment to clear all these settings. Just a sec. OK, there. And I'll switch the icon box setting back to no. Alright. Our next option is icon size. As its name suggests, you can use it to change the size of your icons. I'll set 18 pixels for this. After that, we have two sets of options, normal and hover. Under normal, we can set the icon color. You have this familiar color picker to help you with that. Then we have the icon stroke color. I can't show you this option as it won't work with my chosen icons. Basically, if you picked an SVG icon that has an outline, you'd be able to change the color of that outline using this option. And if the stroke color option is for the icon outline, the fill color is for everything within the outline. Also, this option serves for changing the icon color. If I set something here, there we go. We can see how the icons have changed color. You can see only some of my icons are red now, though. That's because not all of them, and do remember that their SVGs, have appropriate paths set for accepting color changes. All the icons in the media library don't have this issue, but then again, they're not tailor-made. So my SVG icons, let me clear this option, already have the color I want them to. OK. Under these options, we have the icon stroke width. Just like with the color, for this option to work, you'd need an SVG icon that has a stroke setting within its code. Then you'd be able to increase the width of that stroke or outline. By the way, the value you enter here is in pixels. Alright, that was it for the normal option. Now, if we switch over to the hover options, we have the icon hover color. So that's the color that will be visible once someone hovers over an icon, like so. I want to set a slightly different color for this, so I'll add a hex code. I'm using the dark gray. Since my icons are black to start with, this will make it seem like they're getting lighter when hovered over. Then we have the icon stroke hover color and icon fill hover color. If you have the appropriate icons, you can make changes here so the icons will have different colors on hover. And that wraps up the icon style section of the options. After that, we have the Label Style section. For one, we can pick the label position. By default, it's on the left, so my label got placed here. But I can switch it with the top setting. I plan on keeping it this way. Then there's the Label Color option, if we want to change the color of the label text. And with it, we have the Label Typography, for additional text settings such as the font family. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. Then we can change the font size, adjust the font weight, transform the label text to, say, uppercase. Then the style option can be used to make the text italic, for example. Besides that, there's the decoration option so we can add a line over, under, or through our label text. 
Finally, we have the line height, letter spacing and word spacing options if we want to add more space around the text or to space out our letters or words. And that's it for the typography options. Underneath them, we have the label spacing option. With it, we can add more space after the label. With my label above the icons, I get more space under it. If I had kept the label and icons in the same line, then this option would let me add space between the two. OK, for the value here, I'll put 20 pixels. And that's it. Let me hit update to save my work. My social links are done and ready to go. As you've seen, it only takes minutes to set this up on your page. And you can add as many or as few links as you like. The ones I added are here just as an example. You can find other examples on the page we started from. OK, the first example here is the one I actually copied, so you've seen it broken down and already know how it works. Other than that, we have examples of textual social links as well as different link style solutions. Whatever style you decide to use, this widget will make adding links to social media at your site a breeze. We hope this video has covered any points of interest and inspired you to give the social links widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin a try. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thanks for watching.